we have someone who is oh. from London and she has oh, a, a beauty clinic there. And she, uh -huh. her name is Josie, and she says that she personally does. Now, when you said you personally don't like Botox, um, you said she says she'd rather get non-invasive. Um, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I guess I don't always consider, I don't consider things that are really temporary as super invasive. Let's see. You can, can you read this, Rena? She says that um, paralyzes the muscles. Um, I've had headaches and pressure above my eyes for months oh she okay so what would you say to someone if they had um headache or pressure mm -hmm. after having used botox what did they do wrong it has a lot to do with the hydration so that would be one thing that i'd recommend greatly because it's a part the, the hydration thing, they need to drink lots of water 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 oh. when you are dehydrated and have botox injection done sometimes it can give you that kind of a headache and botox is actually used for the um um migraine treatment actually so for some people like 65 yeah. percent of people will have a total uh freedom from migraine because it disrupts the migraine signals but whenever i hear people saying that they had a headache after botox treatment it has more to do with the local congestion and that can be helped with the water drinking like half a gallon to a gallon of water drinking um before and after the procedure will help with that especially for his first injection yeah. it's a weird sensation to have yeah. that entire muscle not working and you're actually overcompensating with the other muscles because your body oh. is trying to raise your eyebrows or the look surprised but you can't because to some portions are um, paralyzed and the other muscles are overworking to compensate that and people can have a headache from that I remember but I didn't realize it but he says as you get older you do start to um, work that area more just out of the, the effort to see sometimes in the bright sun and you don't have sunglasses that you can do a lot of squinting there yeah or you're trying to look uh, further or show uh, yeah so the uh, not having adequate eyesight uh, can uh, force you to use the uh, more muscles there. And right. yeah, all, all of that can contribute to it. Completely. The younger generation it, are doing uh, the Botoxes and the fillers. So um, it's so much more common. I'll have clients say, um, can I book with you on Wednesday? I'm getting Botox on Monday, <laughs> you know, right. or or I have to reschedule because I got a bruise from my filler. It's amazing. <laughs> like it used to be such a thing. Now it's just this maintenance thing. It's like someone saying, you know, I'm working out my underarm to get rid of my flab. <laughs> like nobody, right. no, nobody's embarrassed to say that. And, and nowadays people aren't embarrassed to say, I'm getting rid of my furrowed brow. I'm going to get some Botox. I'll shoot with you next week. Botox has been around for like 38 years. So sure. millennials sort of grew up with this concept. So the older generation have the notion that, oh, I don't want any toxins in my body and it's for vanity and all that. But the younger generations to look at it as a part of the normal maintenance of the face. It's like you want to brush your teeth and you want to uh, do the orthodontic work for your teeth, right? right. And so that concept has been um, accepted. And now newer, younger generations are accepting the fact that if there are methods, effective methods to make you, you know, look relaxed or um, they not so angry, then why not? So it has definitely changed the perception and acceptance. Yeah. Just ask, would Botox affect the rest of our body, our muscles in the in the long term? Um, how how would Botox affect the rest of your muscles as it goes through your bloodstream? Very good question. Well, the um, it is possible. And if you use a large amount, yes. And that's where a lot of Botox black box warning comes from because it was used for cervical dystonia and uh, where people were having a really, really um, a tight muscle. And in order to relax that, we used to like a tens of thousands of units there. So the like maybe 20 units, 40 units you get on your forehead, it's hard for them to travel to the rest of your body to impact. Theoretically, it's possible, but the amount is very small. And both Botox wears off in about three to four months in your body. So it's not something that hang, hangs around for a long time and impacting other places. 
Right. So the for the cosmetic purposes, it's unlikely that you'll have a Botox impact on the other parts of your body. Uh, what um, what do you notice uh, damages skin the most? Sun, sun damage is quite number one thing. And dehydration is number two that I see. And then, of course, in America, a lot of adult acne is still an issue because people are not having enough uh, probiotics in their body. Ah, so, uh, oh, wait, this is good. This is good. You gotta, you're throwing out these little gems, and I got like, to shine the light on it. I hate sunscreen, but I'm Sicilian, so I, I don't do enough sunscreen. Um, but I know I that. I would highly recommend you to look up the Color Science Sun Forgettable Powder Sunscreens. Because if you think about it, the active ingredient of the sunscreen is mineral and zinc oxide and things like that. It's just that cream companies won over the sunscreen business. So that's why they're putting zinc oxide into cream. But why are you getting the cream when you need to have the zinc oxide to block the sun? So if you go to the online and go to Color Science, Color Science. Uh, ColorScience.com, and they have some forgettable and it comes in like a three different uh, tan, fair, medium, uh, so that it, it's not chalky or anything like that. And it's a powder. So it sits on top of your fuzzy hair and blocks the sun. You can multiply, uh, I I'll apply it multiple times a day, and that's a really effective way to sun blocking it. And it's approved by the American Golf Association for the guys, because guys don't want to have the white stuff all over their uh, right. face. And for the babies, it's perfect when the babies, you know, they get a sunscreen going into their eyes and they cry. You just powder them up and then it works really well. So that's my recommendation for people to have sunscreen. Sun forgettable is just powder, like a bronzer. You just put it on top of your um, oh. face, whether you have makeup on or not. And then you can apply it multiple times, which is the key. Most people say, oh, I use sunblock, but I don't know why I'm getting a brown spot. Well, the sunblock that you place in the morning before your makeup, once that doesn't give you some blockage of like SPF of 50 or anything like that. It gives you maybe SPF of two or three. That's all you're getting. And that's why you're getting brown spots. So you want to do appropriate sun uh, screen. And I guarantee you, <laughs> nobody wants to walk around with the white stuff on their face. And, and it's called the sun forgettable. It's the mineral based sunscreen. And everybody should have it. color screen all the time. And the number two is a hydration, hydration, hydration. Because a lot of times, that we're just walking around dehydrated all the time. So number one thing I do with anybody uh, in my practice is making sure that they are hydrated. Um, the, a lot of little crinkles and all that will pump up if you actually have good hydration. And yes. then number, mm -hmm. yes, and in, it's fact, always that. in fact, I'm challenging everyone who's watching this right now, we're gonna take 30 seconds, we're gonna go and we're gonna get water. We're gonna get <laughs> good water. Idea because water can be boring to me, but I have to force it. And I will say, living here in New York, um, I don't drink as much water because I'm, I'm in Manhattan and I'm walking around, I have a lot going on. Um, well, a lot going on meaning like, um, you're just trying to stay alive and you're on the subway and you got your car and you're in and out of a taxi. Whereas in Los Angeles, I sat in traffic a lot. And what did I do? I was on the phone drinking and now, I don't drink as much normally here also because it's so cold you don't get as thirsty or at least you think you don't but your body is still using it you know your body is, is is thirsty but like your sort of mental mouth mind isn't as thirsty when you're looking out at freezing cold and i tell people anybody who has the smartphones just put on the um every hour alarm on it and so that you will know that oh i need to drink water i need to drink water because without that kind of reminder it'll be really hard to remember to drink water because your thirst sensation is going to be less than what your water needs are so a lot of people think that i drink enough water it's because you don't have the thirst sensation activated but your body still hasn't gotten the enough uh, hydration that makes me think i'm going to set an alarm um alexa Set an alarm for me to drink water every hour. <laughs> alarm for what time? Uh, 2 p.m. Like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, all day long while you're awake. I know. I'll do, I'll do more of it later, but how cool that, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then on your phone, which right now my phone is right there. But um, 
because I do have like, I do have alarms to remind me for certain things, but I just never thought to do water. Um, I do have a really great girlfriend in LA who knows I don't like water and every now and then she'll text me, are you drinking water? So guys, put a reminder, um, every hour drink water. Mm -hmm. It's true, I do it, I'll watch the rest later. Gotta go now, love this topic, thanks for the tips. Okay, Josie, you're fantastic. Um, it clear water as opposed to right. coffee, but you can cheat. You know, get yourself the nice, the um, not tight, uh, topped, but the wide enough one. And in the morning, just put the things that you like. You can either do a citrus day, so you can put lemons and lime slices there, yeah. or you can do the like a mint and um, uh, cucumber. That's good too. Or you yeah. can do the berries. And throughout the day, just keep filling it with the regular water, so you have some flavor from the either herbs and the fruit. And at the end of the day, you can throw that out. So that way you have a flavored water that's natural. Yeah. And so you're not so bored and you can change each day. You can have a berry day or the citrus day or the um, cucumber and dill day. And that way it gives you different uh, flavor. Because I know that most people don't like plain water. It's boring and it's a um, tr the, the uh, extra stress to, to drink it. And if it's hard, you're not going to do it. So it has mm -hmm. to be enticing and easy so that you can do it. So make yourself, you know, naturally flavored water, and that way you will be drinking more likely. It's wonderful. Yeah, we. Um, I I find that like I like, I like bottles this size or just a tad bigger because I like to be able to hold it. Um, but if it's too little, it goes too fast, and um, <laughs> and sometimes it might be more expensive to buy a bunch of those. But we just decided to have Amazon um, deliver water because I'm not mm -hmm. always going to the filter system in the house, but I'll grab a bottle, I'll put it by my computer, and I will finish that bottle. And so if it costs me $25 more a month um, having bottles delivered to me, then that's important. And, you know, and then it brings up the issue of waste and plastic. But then I think of, I recycle them. I'm a good citizen. I pay taxes. I donate to so many causes, and when I'm healthy, that's when I can help this planet. So if it means I'm going to be ordering, you know, 30 of those a month um, so that I can be a more productive contributing member to this planet and help it, then I'm going to do that and just recycle them. So that's just a little tip if someone's saying, yeah, but it wastes a lot of plastic. Um, but I have just found that that's how I will get water in me. And Exactly. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, are you coming up with those excuses because you don't want to do it? Or is it a legitimate reason? And the, your priority of hydrating yourself should trump over all the others. And once you're really good at drinking water regularly, then you can do your reusables and all that kind of stuff. So I think the key is that once you set your mind that you absolutely need to have hydration, that should be the goal number one. That's very true. So then you said the third thing was probiotics. Probiotics. Um, I love that. Because in America, we see adult acne all the time, all the time. Whereas you don't see that in the sub-Saharan Africa or the old Asia or the, um, the older Europe or so. It's Northern America and the Europe and unfortunately like the Far East countries that's adopting more of a Western diet is seeing adult acne. I mean, acne is on ladies up to 60s and 70s. And the reason for that is our diet is so poor in um, uh, fermented food. We just don't like smelly food, you know, nachos or the smelly kimchi or anything like that. But it's where we get life, a lot of live um, bacteria. So, and on top of that, we love to pop antibiotics, you know, ear aches, but antibiotics, this or antibiotics. So even for acne control, a lot of times, People go on a year or two of antibiotics, wiping out your gut system. So having probiotics in diet is very important. And if it's not possible for you to get that on a regular basis, then definitely take anywhere from 100 to 200 billion a day. Of 100 to 200 billion a day. Okay. And so if right. you were to get like a, um, I just remember this, but my mom in the 70s was big into acidophilus in the 1970s. And so I... Mm -hmm. I got on that train early she normally like is it let's say you get like an acidophilus tablet how what's the amount of the, you could expect it's, 
you're not going to be able to uh, find the, those uh, large billions and the stop list alone. Um, so I don't usually use stop list. I tell people to actually just go ahead and get a lot of food, um, like sauerkrauts. If you can get it, one cup of sauerkraut, maybe a couple times a day, or kimchi. But don't, I mean, they Korea, they get, they, don't they have to get like organic, like good sauerkraut? Like it's just the regular Heinz sauerkraut from the supermarket that's been sitting on the sh That's not alive is it that is just as good as anything else of is course it? if you can make it at home that's fine but the uh the key is having different kind of live tissue uh live um the bacteria in your body so, so any sauerkraut you can get any kimchi okay. any nachos or the fermented herring if that's your <laughs> what is the difference tell people what the difference between kimchi and sauerkraut Kimchi is made of a napa uh, uh, cabbage in Korea, and they use some type of preserves, like usually shrimp preserves, to initiate the uh, fermentation process. What kind of preserves? Sa is, hmm? What kind of preserves? Uh, shrimp paste. Shrimp. Uh, some type of, right, some type of the seafood-based paste that's a uh, beginning part of the fermentation process. Okay. Whereas the... Um, uh, sauerkraut is just based on the plain uh, cabbage that has been fermented with the uh, salt-based um, uh, brine. Okay. Um, and is vinegar play a part in the um, the fermentation process? Do they like like putting vinegar in it? Not really. The vinegar, like apple cider vinegar, has its own benefits separately. But the fermented foods has the sour flavor from it, but not because of the added vinegar in it. So it's literally just from the waters and the salts and the soaking of the um, of the cabbage and 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 the the chemical process of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Just and also you can get it from the fermented bean paste, like uh, natto's in uh, or tempeh. Those are the soybean based one. So there are many different kind of things um, that you can go. You can. Google the uh, Art of Fermentation. That's a good book. And the um, Amazon. And uh, you can make your own if you wish. Or kombucha has lots of uh, good uh, bacteria there as well. I was going to bring that up. Yes. So kombucha mm -hmm. is, um, you know, I mean, that, that they use some sort of a starter. And then right. and then it's like sugar and tea and water and the, the SCOBY, the, the starter. Mm -hmm. And and a bunch of water, and then that creates this fermented. That gives a, a fermented to, um, the organisms there. And basically our gut has a large, large um, uh, probiotics, the beneficial bacteria, and uh, they need to be maintained basically by giving prebiotics, which is a food for those bacteria to grow on. What a prebiotic is a what? That is actually food substance that your bacteria is utilizing to continue living on. And an example of that would be? Um, a lot of the vegetables um, the, that you're taking that's part of the pre uh, prebiotics. Like just any kind, of, like just having a carrot or <laughs> having <laughs> right. a blueberry or? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. because, and it's because they're alive is what you're saying, right? Right, because bacteria likes to have the good food to live off of. But right. if you keep feeding it bacons and the, um, all the other things that is not really good food for those bacteria, they're not going to live really oh, long well. The bacons. I know. <laughs> I love that she made it plural. You can have it a little bit once in a while, but don't make that as a regular staple of your diet. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, so that's the third thing. We're going over the different things that, that age skin, sun being the first, dehydration being the second, uh, lack of probiotics in your gut, having an unhealthy gut, which creates toxins mm -hmm. coming out of the face. And did you have a fourth one? Well, the, the, a lot of things that people are missing also is the fish oil. And because it has the anti-inflammatory and uh, we really were depending on fish diet because we came from water at some point and so people say oh i eat fish but in america most of fish is muscle um the fish oil is underneath the skin so unless you say you have entire sardine and eating from the head to tail you're not going to get adequate amount so a good amount of omega-3 i would say close to thousand milligram now, a day okay wait good. go back that was an interesting point um so you said that that 
I missed it. <laughs> so we, we don't eat enough fish oil here in America because what did you say about the muscle? Yeah, the, what we think as a fish, you know, when you or, order the, oh, I, I'll have a tuna or I'll have a halibut or, or, or orange roughy, these are all muscle of the fish we are eating, right? We are not having the tish, but the uh, skin on it. Maybe once in a while we eat salmon with the skin on it and we peel that off before we eat. And thus we're missing out on actual fish oil of the fish, which is just underneath the skin. Really? See, now that's something I don't think, excuse me, I don't think a lot of people would really know that. So you get a, um, you know, I mean, I was raised sort of fishing um, out here on Long Island with my grandfather and we would get flounder, we'd catch them, mm -hmm. and then we would um, cut the tail off, cut the head off, cut the skin, the top and the bottom, and we would just eat this white meat. So that meat right. you're saying is the muscle. Mm -hmm. and, and you've missed out on all the fish oil. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so when you get a pink piece of salmon, isn't there any That's oil in, in it? Usually not. They're very um, efficient in keeping the oil underneath the skin. So if you take those nice salmon, then even if it's a fatty salmon, you're still missing out the good portion of the fish oil. And that's why we are recommending people to actually take fish oil supplement or omega-3. Wow. That, that is a fascinating, that's kind of a, like my mind's going, because you think, you know, um, I mean, I sort of like, because I'm not a huge fan of salmon, but I feel like when I go to a wedding and, and you have the option of salmon or steak, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get the salmon because it's got good oils for me. But I'd probably just be fine having the ribeye that I want and just pounding down some good fish oil <laughs> tablets. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. I could do that too. Um, be, well, well, if I'm trying to get fish oil is what I'm saying. If I'm trying to get fish right. oil you're better off doing it that way. Now you said um, eating a whole salmon in a can, that's where you can get better fish oil? Yes, usually when they prepare it in can thing, they really don't put that much of fish oil or the uh, skin in it because they'll make them sardine. Did I say rinse salmon? it too yeah. fast. So what about the don't. whole sardines? When you all sardines, yeah, they usually have a um, fish oil in it because they keep the skin uh, in it because sardines are so small. They usually prepare it with the uh, entire skin on. Do you do you eat whole sardines? Oh, I love whole sardines. Yes, and in in Korea we have a lot of the tiny little anchovies. We eat entire thing. You know, you uh, dry up, and that, that's part of the cuisine. So you know, head to tail and all the skin and everything, bones and all. So. If it's dried, are the oils still part of it? The oily part is not there, but some of the omega will be still there. So, uh -huh. you know, you're eating it, but probably not a good source of the fish oil in that one. You're eating it more of the costumes and all the other bones and minerals. Okay. That is an amazing tip to have. I'm, I'm still, I just, yeah, that, that it's actually important to buy fish oils because just eating fish here in america you're not really getting oil you're getting the meat and you're getting right. the muscle which doesn't store the oil that's fascinating um so okay oh my gosh i i, I could talk to you forever about this issue <laughs> this topic um and you are based out of actually i know you're pueblo colorado that's where the adonis cosmetic uh, surgery and spa is right mm-hmm and do cosmetic procedures there as well? Right. I do um, the breast augmentation lift and the tummy tuck and all that body cosmetic work. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, that's a whole, we didn't even really get into that heavy duty stuff. I just went superficial skin. Um, on the other hand, that's what uh, is impacting everybody on a daily basis. So the tips that the, your audience is getting today is something they can utilize right away. Whereas big operation is something once in a lifetime or the not everybody's in need of. Right, right. Well, thank you. See, you're such a you're such a nice guest. I know, and I do. I like to give people little takeaways um, because that's what we all need, you know. And um, yeah, these were so so super helpful. Oh, and I'm going to go get myself some fish oils right now. And powder sunscreen and, and water. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. We will chat later. Okay.
thank you thanks thanks for inviting me you bet bye